Hey guys, welcome. I wanted to talk today about the two different basic types of muscle fibers that you'll find in the human body. Not all muscle fibers are created equal and there's actually a couple of different types. We're only going to talk about the two major types of muscle fibers and those are red muscle fibers and white muscle fibers. Okay, so I'm going to kind of fill out this little chart right here. Um, these red muscle and white muscle fibers have completely different jobs in the body. So um, red muscle fibers are obviously red in color and that's because they have a lot of blood um, inside of them, right? So they are heavily kind of innervated by a lot of capillaries. So these guys are going to have lots of capillaries and they're also going to contain lots of blood. And they um, contain a lot of blood and all these capillaries because these red muscles, they get most of their energy or ATP from um, aerobic respiration. And all that is, is so aerobic respiration, if we remember back to like biology class, that's when a cell will take sugar and oxygen and through the magic of cellular respiration, it'll produce a lot of ATP. It'll produce 32 molecules of ATP with one molecule of glucose. That's a really efficient way to produce energy or ATP, but the only problem is that uh, aerobic respiration takes a really long time. So it's efficient, but it takes a really long time to make those ATP molecules, okay? Well, red muscle fibers, they rely on aerobic respiration to get their ATP. Now, that means that they need oxygen. They have to have oxygen. And that is where this blood comes in. They're gonna have lots of capillaries, lots of blood, and that is going to um, help them kind of achieve this aerobic respiration, okay? Another thing that red muscle fibers are gonna have is a pigment. It's a protein that helps to store oxygen within the muscle. That pigment is called myoglobin. And that myoglobin is actually what gives these red muscle uh, fibers their red color, right? So this is a red little pigment that stores um, oxygen. Like when you cook a steak, you know when you cook a steak and after you cook it, you put it on the plate and then you'll have all that like juice that leaks out, that red juice, and you might have thought that it was blood. Well, it actually wasn't blood. It was just the myoglobin that had leached out of the steak after it had been cooked, okay? Now, back to how all this kind of works. So, these red muscle fibers, they need oxygen, which means they need blood. Now, if we remember, the level of a muscle cell, a single muscle cell, is the muscle fiber, okay? Inside of that cell, or that muscle fiber, that's where all the sarcomeres are, and all the, you know, the myosin heads, the actin molecules, that's where the sarcomeres are that cause the contraction. In order for the, all of those little sarcomeres to contract, the oxygen needs to diffuse from the outside of the cell to the inside of the cell. Like, the blood can't go inside of another cell, right? So capillaries can't go inside of another cell, it just doesn't work that way. So this oxygen has to diffuse from the outside of the fiber to the inside of the fiber. That means that these muscle fibers can't be very large because we know that diffusion doesn't work that well across long distances. So that oxygen needs to be able to diffuse very quickly from the outside of the cell to the inside of the cell, which forces those muscle fibers to be very thin, okay? So red muscle fibers are very thin because they rely on oxygen to diffuse the middle. Now, we had talked about this last time, but you can tell the strength of a muscle literally by how thick it is. Thicker muscles are stronger because you have more myofibrils and more sarcomeres pulling in parallel, where thinner muscles are, or um, thinner muscle fibers are weaker. So if a red muscle is relying on aerobic respiration, it's got to be thin, which means that it has to be weak. Okay, so that's another kind of characteristic of these red muscle fibers. But because it is so efficient at producing ATP through aerobic respiration, these guys can contract for a really long time and they're very slow to fatigue. So as you can imagine, trying to think about the different types of behaviors or activities that these red muscle fibers might power, you're gonna think about activities that the body can do for a really long time without getting tired quickly. These could be things like talking, right? Like I'm talking a really long time and, and I'm not getting super tired after talking for a couple of seconds. So that would be powered by the red muscle fibers that are located in my tongue and my, and my jaws. 
Another one would be the uh, muscles that allow you to stand and sit, so your postural muscles in your back. Those are going to be made up of mainly red muscle fibers, and that is going to power that um, activities you can do for a long amount of time. Also, you're going to have a lot of red muscle fibers in the muscles of your legs that allow you to walk. Not run, well, maybe slowly jog, but walk and slowly jog, but definitely not sprint. So think about things that you can do for a very long period of time. Those are going to be powered by these red muscle fibers. If we come over here, white muscle is like completely different. Okay, White muscle is going to be white in color because it contains hardly any blood. So very few capillaries and it's contained very little blood. It doesn't need nearly as much blood as the red muscle fibers because these white muscle fibers, they don't really need oxygen or blood to produce their energy. They're going to produce their energy through a process that does not require oxygen and that is called anaerobic respiration, which is primarily glycolysis. So anaerobic respiration is the process in which these white muscles, muscles um, fibers get their energy. Anaerobic respiration, which is really a glycolysis, is much quicker at producing ATP, but it's much less efficient. So if you use glycolysis to produce ATP, one molecule of glucose can produce only two, only two ATP molecules as opposed to 32 for the aerobic respiration. So it's much less efficient, much less efficient, but it can produce these two ATP molecules super fast, so about two and a half times faster than aerobic respiration can occur. Okay? Um, this means that these white muscle fibers are inefficient, but they can produce ATP very, very quickly. Now, another thing that is really important for these white muscle fibers, oxygen doesn't have to diffuse all the way from the outside of the fiber to the inside where all the myofibrils are. And this means that these white muscle fibers can be much more thicker because they're not relying on diffusion of oxygen from the inside to out. Since these guys are much more thicker, that means they're going to be a lot stronger. Okay, so the large muscles of your body um, are going to be these large muscles like your gluteus maximus is going to contain a lot of these white muscle fibers. They're thicker, they're stronger, they're less efficient, and they tire a lot quickly. So they're quick, they're fast to fatigue because this process of glycolysis and anaerobic respiration is not very efficient. So these muscle fibers are going to um, tire out really quickly. Now, if you think about the types of behaviors that these white muscle fibers are going to power, these are going to be the activities that are like uh, are characterized by short bursts of motion or energy, like sprinting, lifting weights, swimming really as fast as you can for like a short distance, like a hundred meters, or, or you know, um, you know, for for a short distance, and um. And what's going to happen is that you can cause these white muscle fibers to contract very rapidly, but they run out of fuel and they fatigue uh, very quickly. Um, weightlifting um, is, is a great example of what activates these white muscle fibers. And, you know, as you lift weights, muscles, your muscles are going to get bigger, especially if you're lifting heavy weights. And that's because more myofibrils are being packed into each um, white muscle fiber. Um, through the micro damages that occur when you when you lift a heavy weight at the level of the sarcomeres. All right, so here's a quick. This is kind of like a quick overview of the two different major types of muscles, uh, fibers. Now most people are, are going to have both white and red muscle fibers in each one of your muscles. Like your bicep is going to contain both red and white muscle fibers. Um, but it does vary from person to person. Um, like some people are just naturally going to have more white muscle fibers versus red muscle fibers in their muscles. And these folks are going to train much more effectively or they're going to respond much more effect effectively to um, training of like weightlifting, right? So they're going to be able to put on muscle much more quicker. Whereas other folks, they might have a higher 
density of red muscle fibers, and they're going to respond much more effectively to distance or endurance training. You know, some some folks are just going to be great at running longer distances, where other folks are going to be great at running shorter distances. A nice way to kind of think about this is that when you look at the animal kingdom, um, when we think about chicken, what's like the obvious white meat of a chicken? Well, it's the chicken breast. That's primarily made up of white muscle fibers. And I don't know if you've ever thought about this, but have you ever thought about what that muscle does for the chicken in a chicken's actual life? Well, it powers the wings. And you might not have seen chicken flying around much. That's because they don't. Like chickens don't really cruise around and fly around in the sky all the time. They don't really use their wings much at all. They only use their wings if they're really trying to escape from something very quickly. Like if you try to chase and catch a chicken, he'll jump off the ground and flutter for a little bit. He's using those white muscle fibers to power a couple, a short kind of um, couple seconds of, of really quick flight just to get away from danger. Whereas if you were to look at more of a cruising bird, like, I don't know, like a pelican or maybe even like a condor, it's going to have a much higher density of red muscle fibers. If you were to look at um, a fish, for example, um, let's say, let's take a fish that just likes to sit on the bottom and wait all day long, wait for prey, like flounder. Okay, so a flounder just sits on the bottom most of the day, just waiting for a smaller fish to swim on top, and then he'll very rapidly swim up to that fish and catch it. Well, flounder has white meat. That's because its muscles are primarily made of white muscle. It doesn't really need to swim for a long time. It just needs to power a short couple bursts of very powerful swimming to catch its prey. Tuna, on the other hand, is red in color. Its meat is red in color, and that's because it swims around all day. It's going to have a much higher density of red muscle fibers, which allow it to cruise the open ocean for a long period of time. Salmon's a funny example. It's pink in color because the red and white muscles are intertwined, um, and it's very it's unique to that kind of group of fish. Well, hopefully that kind of clears up um, the different types of muscle fibers. Thank you.